All right, everyone. So for this video, I'm going to be talking about a tactic called Zugzwang. And uh, I guess you could say that it isn't really a traditional tactic, but if you don't put it in tactics, then where do you put it? And so it's, it's really like a concept. You are trying to give your opponent the move in a position where they don't want to move because any move that they make will worsen their position. It's commonly seen in end games, and uh, I have this pawn end game set up that I'm gonna show where you can create a Zugzwang. And really that means, uh, you know, that's one of those German words, I think it actually means move compulsion, like you're compelling your opponent to move. You know, obviously when they don't want to. So let's, let's take a look. So, in this position it's the black pieces to move. Take, take. And, and here's what we're trying to do here. As you can tell, this black king wants to get to this c4 square. He wants to advance to be able to push this extra pawn. Currently at the moment, this king is standing in the way. So we need to create a move where it is the white king to move so that he has to step away. And how can we do this? We push the pawn to h4. And what this does is it just kind of passes the move. You know, chess isn't like Scrabble or something where you can just say, I want to pass my turn. You have to make a move on every turn. So now the king has to step away, king c4. And now, now it just becomes a, an easy an easy win. You know, you have the extra pawn, you have a free shot to the, the end, and uh, you can even go after the other pawns. You can take as many as you want to make it, make it easier. And uh, this is a, just a winning end game at this point because you have this extra pawn and uh, very easy to win. And all because of that zugzwang, you were able to create the position where the, the king had to step out of the way. So now we're going to take a look at a little bit of a more complicated example. And uh, this one has some more pieces on the board. So let's put it up. So in this position, it is the white pieces to move. And things are getting a little bit difficult. Uh, as you can tell, let's look. There's some difficulties, you know, obviously uh, this knight has to stop that bishop from getting to d1 because that would be irritating. And this king is forced to defend this pawn. But now, if it's the white pieces to move, where can we go to hold all of this together? There's not very many waiting moves that we can make to try to pass the turn. So, so let's see here. So the pawn moves to b3. Now the pawn moves to b3. Okay, it's the the black pieces turn. The king moves to e7. The king goes to g5. King d7. King f4. King e6. And okay, we're at the same position. Now it's the white pieces to move again. But now what can the white pieces do to hold everything together? Now, now that the pawn has already been pushed, how can we, how can we play? So the only move Knight b1, and now, now bishop to d1. Okay, we're attacking the pawn on c2 now as well. Knight a3, g6. Now, where can we go as the, the white pieces? If the king moves, then this pawn on e5 is no longer defended. If the knight moves, then the pawn on c2 is no longer defended. And so no matter what, something is going to be lost. You know, none of these pawns can get pushed. So, we have a Zugzwang. And uh, something is going to be lost. So let's, let's see, let's just say king e3 and king takes. So if this uh, were to happen, well, okay, the game isn't necessarily won yet. You know, you're just up the one pawn, but still, that's a pretty nice advantage if you're in an endgame. And uh, yeah, you'll still have to work, but uh, this is definitely a very good advantage to have. All right, so hopefully this helps to explain the concept of Zugzwang. Hopefully you're able to use this in your games, and, uh, and hopefully it helps you out. All right, see you later.